<clears throat> well, welcome back to my shop. Um, actually, there is something I need to do this week. I've been meaning to make a French cleat holder for my hammers. I have a number of them and uh, they need to go on the wall because they were on the wall, but they're in some janky holders. So I need to make a holder for them and not blow bubbles. So stick around. I'll show you my process of how I decide how to make a French fleet holder for them, what kind of space it takes up and uh, the design, if you're interested in any of that. So as with any of my projects that I come up with, um, for the French fleet holders anyway, I always look at what I'm trying to put on the wall. I get them all together in one place so that I can see exactly what I've got. That way I can determine if I want to make just one holder, two holders, whatever, if something's going to be left off, and go from that point. Alright, here they are, all the, the hammers I use in my shop. But the biggest thing I need to think about is space, because obviously I can't hang them on the wall just like this, because it takes up a, a very big footprint. Um, I usually try to keep my French feet holders as small as possible. So the first thing I did was actually did, not a prototype, but just a little test piece, just a two by four to see how it would work. So there's two different diameter holes. I didn't do it right on the edge. I actually did it in just a little bit, uh, but I just wanted to see how these would interact with the holes. So the ball peen hammer, you can see that it fits in there pretty good, pretty snug. And it protrudes past the back here by just a hair. I want just a little more space back there. So when I go to put it on, it doesn't get jammed in there. It has some space to, to figure it out. With the finish hammer, it works just fine too, but it's a little wobbly because there's a gap between the hammer and the board here. I need to file that out. But also you notice it really protrudes past the back of that one. This one, however, my framing hammer goes in there. It's nice and snug. In fact, I had to hammer on the head with my finish hammer just to get it to knock down in there just a little bit more and get a little more tight and snug. But once again, it's proud of the surface back here, but it's real tight up against the surface on the front. When I get around to making it, I figure out the measurements to drill in from the back and then drill out also the, the front piece. So these will fit on there right nicely. And I might have to do a little filing and a little sanding just to get them to finesse just where they need to go. But that'll take care of these three hammers. I was gonna put all these on one big holder initially. In fact, here's a picture of what the layout was gonna be when I first started thinking about this. But I decided against that because that takes up a lot of wall space. So I decided to do just these three hammers. And what's nice about this is that it fits in a very small footprint as opposed to the picture that I put up there. So that allowed me to figure out that I want just these three on one and then these three on another. Let's focus on these three. What I think I'm gonna do, so if I make three pieces an inch thick and layer them one, two, three, I can sandwich them and have an angle beveled on this side and an angle beveled on that side. More or less have it like my fingers here, but kind of raised up. So this just fits right in there and holds it like that. Same thing with this. Space to the handle. I'm going to do a similar design. This one was tricky. Uh, since it's almost the same thickness as the handle, the head is, I can't really make something that cradles from both sides and I don't want to put it on like a T like that because then that wastes a lot of wall space because of the width of the head. So. What I was actually looking at was this one. The, the two by four here is just the right thickness for that to kind of rest on. But if I put the two by four on the wall, that can just fall right off. That's when I realized I have a magnet. Obviously I can use that. I'll drill out a two inch hole near the top. And then on the piece, the backer piece that the French cleat is made of, um, I will attach the magnet to the back right behind because this is two inch also right behind where that is so that I can just just knock this right on there and the magnet retains it on 
and doesn't let it fall off, but it's not wasting a whole lot of space either. And then the two inch Forstner bit is, well, you can see it right there. It's just about the right diameter for, for the little mini sledge. So that's my design process. I don't really have really drawn out plans. I just go off of what feels right, what looks right. Like I said, these three together and put these three together. So now that saves a whole lot of space, that saves a whole lot of space, but I can maneuver these into different positions on my wall. All right, so a lot of woodworkers that I, I follow on YouTube and Instagram, other things, um, they always draw up plans for the projects they're working on, which is great for them. I do this in my spare time. I have a full-time job, I have a family. I get out here whenever my wife lets me come out here. So the time I spend in the shop, I try to maximize. Uh, the one thing that has taught me as a woodworker and lots of other things in my life too is that designing on the fly. Um, I've heard Mark from the Wood Whisperer talk about uh, relative dimensioning when it comes to building a project. He doesn't necessarily go off of uh, measurements at some points in the project just because it's easier to make sure that you get the right size part. I will start to work on a project and say, you know what, let's change that, let's change this, this works better that way, I like the way this looks better now that I see it. Because that's the other thing, I see things in my mind, but when it comes to fruition and I'm building it, it doesn't always come out the way I like. Um, sometimes it comes out better, which is amazing to me, because I don't think I ever could have thought of some of the things that I've made in my head the way they look right now. So the point I'm trying to make is, I like the design on the fly. That's why you see me changing up uh, directions sometimes when I say I'm gonna do this, but then I do that. It's because I decided, to just go that way. And I'm sorry if I haven't explained that to you, but that's just how I work. So hopefully you like these videos. If you do, please like and subscribe, share, comment. I actually do like the feedback. So if you have something you want to say, I'm listening. I'll try to get back to you. I'm usually pr pretty quick about getting back. So uh, thank you. All right, so first things first. I need to measure how wide this is so I know how big of a block I need to, to make the, the hammer holder. Um, if you've noticed in my projects, I use a lot of scrap wood, a lot of pallet wood and crates and stuff. Um, a lot of that is unusable with knots or uh, cracks, deformities, nail holes, whatever. I don't care about all that, especially for some of my shop French cleats. Um, I'll still use it anyway because I'm the only one that sees this and it also gives me an opportunity to try and highlight some of the nicer work because some of the nicest grain I found is around the knots and the, the deformities, the cracks and stuff. So if I can use it stable and make it look beautiful, that's what I like to do. So you'll see me in just a second using a board that's, well, should be firewood, but I'm gonna use it for this anyway. All right, here's the board I was talking about. See, it's got some nice grain in that, but then there's this big old crack running down the length of it. Not on the back side, but you see some nice side grain here um, and some nail holes down here on this other end, some staple holes. It doesn't really matter because I can hide that crack in the middle of all of this and then the glue will seep in, it'll bind it all together, it'll become much stronger. So for something like this, I don't care. All right, so while that's gluing up, I'm gonna build up the, the, the pieces I need to hold the, uh, the mallets. All right, yet again, another reason why I don't really draw plans. I changed the design a little bit. Um, it wasn't thick enough or wide enough for to go between the two slots of the, uh, the, the oak here for the handles of the mallets. So I got two of them I got to glue together now. And then once those are glued together and milled up, I could then insert them between each set of the walnut and then glue those up to create the slots for where the handles of the mallets are gonna go. I'm gonna use these to glue up a block for the mini sledge. said and done this is generally what I expect it to look like. Now I need to chamfer the edges and glue everything together. I 
as you can see, I've measured out and marked and drilled these holes, the two different sizes, the two different depths that each of the hammers are gonna need to recess back in here. So, as you can see, they just cradle right in there, real nice. Um, when I say real nice, they, they fit at least. Um, each of them are gonna need a little finessing for each of the holes that they go into, because they don't fit right like, for instance, this one. You can hear this little snap. That's because the, the hole is recessed just a little too much down into. I need to, to, to sand these edges so it just slots right down in there. But then also sand out a little notch in the front here so that the uh, where it meets up with the handle actually grooves over just fine. bit of sanding this is all finished up all right and then on this one it needs to be sanded up also through the different grits the belt end is actually bigger radius than or bigger diameter than the biggest spindle is that I have for it so I'm just gonna go in from the end and I'll show you how I'm doing that all right so there it is with the radius sanded in from the end that just fits in there right nice like. All right, so I went ahead and made the decision to make four individual holders rather than two, one for these and one for these, just because the smaller they are, the more modular they are, the more I can move them around and place them exactly where I need them. for the, uh, the framing hammer, finish hammer, and ball paint hammer. They're cut to the exact width of the headpiece here, which will go right about there. And then I got this uh, off-cut piece of scrap walnut, which has uh, got some figure in it. I cut to the exact width also that I'm actually gonna put right down here on the bottom. So I'll glue this in place. I'm not gonna worry about gluing the seam in between because it'll be held on from the back onto the main headpiece, and then I'll just need a French cleat for the back for that one. All right, so I'm gonna be putting a couple of screws in from the back side on this, as I make a couple of holes to go in from the back side, but then I'm not gonna attach it because first I need to attach the French cleat to the top of it. And then once I get the cleat on, then I can put it back on. Now that those are done, I can actually set this aside until I get ready to, to cut my French cleats for that. Definitely don't want the uh, the heads of the screws to be protruding on the back here because it can interfere with the French cleat system. And depending on your French cleat, you really don't want the screws protruding on the front. But on this one, it's okay since the actual head of the mallet is spaced away. It doesn't really matter. Much. Still the same situation. It doesn't really need to be right up against it. Let's work on the last one.
screw heads are recessed. That works just fine. Exactly what I was looking for. Please let me know down in the comments below what you think of the project and how it turned out. In the meantime, I'm going to go enjoy me some bubbles.